Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another video. As you can tell, I have another guest. Hello! This is Aubrey from The Minimal Millennial. Thank I like you. how you say my name. Aubrey. Aubrey. <laughs> this is Aubrey <laughs> Darling from The Minimal Millennials. <laughs> she also has her own channel, Aubrey Matney, so you mm. should check out both of them. But we've just done a video. Because Aubrey lives van life mm -hmm. and your followers really wanted to know like how sustainable van life really is. Yeah. So we just did a quite an in-depth look at the carbon footprint of basically your water, electricity, CO2, or <laughs> <laughs> we translated that all into CO2 and like yeah. fuel and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you should definitely check out the video that we did. So we'll put it in the link down below. But for this video, we want to talk about other ways of traveling that is a little bit more sustainable than obviously flying. So we're going to talk about basically van life. And then also because Aubrey and her husband, Christian, they travel full time which is really cool. <laughs> um, but also I went to Italy this summer for a wedding and we tried to be as sustainable as possible and we traveled across the country by train instead of obviously flying because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to talk about different kind of modes of transport and other kind of ways and tips that we've picked up from traveling sustainably. Sometimes when you go traveling somewhere, you will fly there and you will spend time in just one place. But what we like to do is when you do go somewhere is to try and travel around that place as much as mm -hmm. possible, but using other modes of transport. So as I said, when I went to Italy, I decided to use trains because trains are far more environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. There are loads of people that take the train and it's not just one of you flying or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I found it really interesting talking to Aubrey about how she travels around like the US and travels by kind of car and what that really means for being sustainable. Yeah. We made a whole video about it. <laughs> so you should definitely check that out if you're interested on like specifically van life and how sustainable of a mode of travel it is, I guess. But um, one thing that I think we do to try to be as sustainable as possible is when we go to a city like for uh, like Seattle, for instance, we went to Seattle and parked outside the city most days. And then we bought um, like a little bus car and used the tra public transportation in Seattle. So we weren't driving our own vehicle all over Seattle. Or when we went to Portland, we biked all over Portland. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like, when I was in DC, for example, like we did a lot of cycling around. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really like about a lot of US cities that mm -hmm. I've been to is that they do have those kind of like bikes. Yeah. We have bikes in and <laughs> they're so good. And we yeah. went to Brighton to hang out with Maddie last weekend. And again, we used the bikes there as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just a nicer way of when you are in a city yeah. of trying to lower your footprint yeah. by like not taking a car or if you are vanning around trying to reduce it when you are yeah. in one place. And I feel like I'm not I'm not going to very many cities at this point that don't have bikes for rent if you don't if you're not traveling with a bike or you don't have a bike already. Like mm. they are everywhere now. And yeah. then you have these scooters. Oh my god, the electric scooters. Don't even get me started about the electric <laughs> scooters. <laughs> I'm a little terrified for your life if you use the electric scooters, but they're kind of sustainable, I guess. I mean, right? they, but they are scary. Like, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, when I first went on them, when in DC, I was actually terrified that yeah. I was just gonna like, like fall off one. See, I'm too, you're braver than I am. I never even did it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like in the suburbs of DC, honestly, yeah. like no one's around. And also streets in the US, in my personal opinion, are quite wide. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, if a truck's coming at you, you've got a lot of like wide berth. Yeah, and yeah. usually people are pretty nice in the states. Like they go mm. all around you and yeah. slow down for you. Whereas here, yeah, they don't. Do you, do you like? I've seen one person in the states get hit by a car on the bike. Does wow. that happen here? Yeah, people get hit by bikes all the time. I mean, by cars on their bikes yeah. all the time. Oof. I mean, I still cycle all across London because one, it's free. Uh, two, it's more sustainable mm -hmm. and. Three, it's actually just nicer than being crammed on like a commuter train right. with other like polite Londoners who really hate being in your space but can't help it. But that leads me on to like the metro as well and mm -hmm. I know it's not widely available in kind of maybe all American mm -hmm. cities but a lot in Europe you have metros in Paris, you have metros in um, definitely in DC when I went to visit yeah. and downtown Austin where we went. Yeah. There are so many metros everywhere that it helps you in really big cities to get around yeah but obviously it's, it's different because your yeah. cities are quite car oriented yeah. 
I've seen a lot of people in the States, like, they'll get on the bus and go a portion of the way, but they'll bring their bike with them. Mm. I haven't seen very many people do that here, getting on public transport with their bike. But I think that's yeah. one way that people, like, tend to kind of combine both of them because buses and trains don't go to as many places usually in your average US city, mm -hmm. but you can like combine them, I think, and be a little better. <laughs> yeah, like we have um, certain times of the day that you're allowed to have your bike on mm -hmm. trains, but on the tube, you're only allowed to have like a fold up bike, I think. Oh, interesting. But I love that in the US on um, buses, yeah. you can put it on the front of the bus, <laughs> yeah. and then when they get off, the bus is like, just sits and waits for you to take off your bike. Yeah. I think it's so jokes. <laughs> But it makes me laugh because I was thinking like, why are you bringing your bike yeah. if you're getting the bus? But then there are some roads that you just can't cycle down. Right. But anyway, we, we digress. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to the second point. And the second one is when we go traveling, we try to, well, when I say we, me and people I know, <laughs> we try to get like an Airbnb because one, it's fundamentally a lot less uh, wasteful than, mm. hot, like, <laughs> than <laughs> hotels. Um, it means that it gives us the ability to cook a lot of our food at home. Mm -hmm. And I know in van life, obviously yeah. you have your own kitchen. Yeah. Like, have you found that to be just like a good way of also saving money, but just being a bit more sustainable with your food? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, like we, we don't, okay. When we were in Portland and LA, it was way too easy to go out to eat. Yeah, so, I can imagine. Because the vegan scene was just like insane there. But for the most part, we eat in our house. And I think that <laughs> in, our little house. in our little house, um, a lot of people, not very many people live in vans and are traveling that way all the time. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I found a lot of people do is, um, especially in places like Iceland or Australia or New Zealand, but really almost every country has this now, where you can go there and you can rent a camper van. Cool. And so that might be some way to do it where you can see a lot of the country, maybe you need to rent a car anyways, but then that way not only are you saving money, but you're also, you have a kitchen and you have a setup where you can cook your own food yeah. and be less wasteful. Yeah, definitely. I think this is kind of like a hybrid video about being more sustainable, also like yeah. saving a bit of money. Yeah. Because like, I find definitely when I go to other countries and other cities, mm -hmm. eating out is just become so easy and yeah. when you're on holiday you kind of forget any yeah. sense of oh I should not be spending too much money right. or oh it's a waste to go and do all this yeah. stuff but because it's now becoming a lot more like a bigger part of my life and yeah. it is your entire life right I suppose you become a lot more kind of concerned it's hard when you travel to a new country I think sometimes to make your own food because grocery stores and ways of like getting food um to cook is so different mm. from country to country. So for instance, in the States, I'm used to having massive supermarkets and a Walmart everywhere with a grocery section. And it's so easy to go grocery shopping. Yeah. And here I like honestly don't even, first of all, I can't even tell you like one name of a grocery store because I haven't been good about like looking for grocery stores, mm. but that's hard. Or like for instance, in Mexico, we went and traveled in Mexico for like six weeks or two months. And we mainly did, we mainly found that it was best to buy our food from fruitarias, which are like kind of hole in the wall. You can't really find them on Google maps. Like you can a grocery store and things like yeah. that. So you just have to like be very intentional. I think, especially when you're going to a new, either like region of the US or like a new country, it's just harder because you don't have that same routine. Yeah, 100%. And that's why I think that research is so important mm -hmm. that if you are trying to be sustainable whilst also enabling yourself to travel, researching like some of the best places to eat or shop mm -hmm. or again, like when we were in Mexico as well, we mostly went to kind of, you know, those kind yeah. of farmers markets that yeah. seem to be happening every single day. Yeah. And they have no problem, like as long as you know a little bit of Spanish to yeah. ask them, like, please may I have it in my bag? Like, yeah. they, don't, they don't care. Right. And I think research is one of the best tools that mm. you can use because it enables you to know ahead. Mm. And that's why I'm trying to do all this like low impact living in series because all the places that I go to, I want to be able to then use the knowledge that I gain from that place to show people mm like what else is out there that you can go yeah and the, the, the dc one coming next week i've just been very Ooh. lazy about it <laughs> yeah. but yeah research is definitely super important because you don't know what's there unless yeah. you and you can miss it as well yeah that's one of the shames is that i remember when i went to barcelona someone was like oh did you go to this massive uh supermarket mm -hmm. no supermarket sorry like farmer's market yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was like 
Oh, I didn't know about it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like a massively lost opportunity. Mm. So yeah, definitely trying to do some research, mm -hmm. have your own sort of place to cook. Yeah. Because then that enables you to go to like the fruit areas and yeah. like the farmers markets because then you have space to cook. Right. And to like actually use eat locally and eat seasonally. Yeah. Because without that, in, especially in hotels, they don't even give you like mm. a knife or like a chopping board <laughs> or like anything like that. Yeah. In a lot of hostels, I think they do. Okay. But it's not the same as having your own yeah. kitchen. Yeah. At all. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Also, if you know who Rob Greenfield is, I went to go see a talk by him, and he said that anytime he feels he has to travel for like a talk or something to do real activism, he tries to go for as long as possible. Mm. Which is why, like, when it's great that when you went to Mexico, like, yeah. you went for like two months, right? Because you knew you were going to go somewhere, and then you can see as much of it as possible. Yeah. And I like to try and do a bit of activism however soft that activism yeah. is but I remember you saying that a lot of van lifers like aren't vegan mm -hmm. so you like to kind of like softly talk to them about it yeah like to me when we're hanging out with other van lifers who aren't vegan I'm not the kind of person who's kind of like hey everybody should be vegan yeah. I'm the kind of person who like wants to welcome you into my home and like cook you an awesome vegan meal oh, so and great. so like I guess that's probably the main thing that I try to do when yeah. we're with even like not even van lifers like in LA we met up with a bunch of people who were just like filmmakers or producers or whatever and like a few of them got so comfortable in our van and it was so fun and uh and we like went to awesome vegan places with them or like made the meals and things like that so that's so great yeah <laughs> and like that's why when i was in uh the us i went to go and specifically to hang out with shelby from mm -hmm. the channel shelby Soul. <laughs> and because we do exactly the same thing yeah. but our perspectives are so different because mm -hmm. i don't come from a background of doing a degree in something like environmental science where she does mm -hmm. she's also american and i'm British. Yeah. So it was nice to go and talk and also learn so much yeah. and then be able to create something together that can further like our movement and mm -hmm. what we're trying to achieve. So I think that it's really great and really important that when you are traveling that you use it as wisely as possible. Yeah. And Noor, one of our contributors for the low impact movement, she wrote a whole blog piece because she's just done like loads of traveling mm. in Asia and she wrote a blog piece about you know low impact tips for traveling so you should definitely check them out because they're different from what we're saying um but yeah I think it's just important that you're really conscious when you do travel mm -hmm. we both think that traveling is really important because we both have grown as people and learned so yeah. much about other cultures about the way other people live grown enormously in like empathy and understanding yeah. of others because I mean, I know that I certainly come from a very privileged background. And so, and traveling is a, a wonderful privilege that mm -hmm. I'm, you know, we're able to have. And so to be able to use that privilege and kind of explore other places, learn about other people, and then use that for some kind of activism, I think is really great. Yeah. I think you said like something earlier too that was really interesting, where like when you go to one place, stay there as long as possible. Like mm -hmm. I, I really want to like highlight that because I think that is, I don't know, like you're going to waste by traveling to a place, whether you're flying there, driving there, training there, like whatever it is, like to get from one place to another is going to cost something. Yeah. And so like use that wisely by not only like being really intentional about what you're doing there, what you're promoting there and that kind of thing, but also stay there as long as possible and take advantage of that trip so you don't feel like in a year you have to go to Italy again yeah. or something like that. Exactly, right. 100% agree, yeah. obviously. <laughs> anyway, we have waffled on for an incredibly long time as <laughs> per usual for this channel. So please go and check out the video that we're doing on Aubrey's channel and obviously I'm gonna put both of her channels down below so you should check them out. If you're interested in van life, they have done a shit ton of videos on it <laughs> so you should go and check it out. Also, it's nice to see a like, yeah, you're a couple, but mm -hmm. You've done a lot of videos on kind of like female traveling mm -hmm. and like women living in vans and also like, I don't know, you kind of getting involved in actually building the van as well. Because mm -hmm. then it makes me feel like when I watch your channel that if I wanted to live in a van, I could actually do it too. Uh, yes. Which I think is Im <laughs> it's important that you know, we yeah. empower one another to do yeah. shit like that. Yeah. Anyway, we have waffled on for some. So thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So nice to have another perspective because it can get quite one dimensional on this channel. <laughs> so anyway. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, like it if you liked it, subscribe, go and check out our other video and we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye.